All right, well today we're going to build a fire with a bow drill. You know, there's a practical application if you're ever stranded, you know, in the woods without a fire. I went on a canoe trip when I was about 14 by myself, had a cigarette lighter. The roller broke on my lighter the first time I needed it, and I never had a fire. Oh, that was an overnight trip. I didn't have fire for the rest of my trip. So uh, I, I was really interested in ways to make fire without flint and steel, without matches. Or um, So what we're going to do here is just kind of go over the basics. The first thing, there's four principles or four skills that you need to know. The first one is tree identification. Um, you'd like to have very soft wood. So willow is my first choice when I could find it. Basswood is another good choice. I've used poplar. It's not my favorite, but it will work. And uh, you can use birch too. It's a little hard, but it works pretty good. And you can find that in wet areas easily. So uh, once you've got that skill mastered and you make your, your drill, the parts you need need to be extremely dry. You can't go around picking up your drill up off the ground. You need to find trees that are standing dead or leaning dead or uh, have fallen into some other things and are at least a you know, foot off the ground or so. So the first part we need is our drill. It doesn't have to be that long. And this is about 12 inches, but it needs to be very straight, straight as you can get it. And I've got two points on this end. One is uh, kind of... Kind of uh, uh, blunt because this is where our fire is going to be. We want friction on this end. And this end is more pointed because this is where our rock is going to be. And we don't want friction on that end. And I use a rock. I use the oyster shell, whatever I can find, a mussel shell. This is another rock with a shallow space in it. You can use a piece of hardwood. But you want less friction on the tip. And you'll see why as we use this. So you could use hardwood for that and softwood for your fireboard. This fireboard is a willow tree. I just took my uh, a hatchet and just roughed out uh, the sides off of it, made it about one inch thick and uh, I like it long so I can put my foot on it and hold it down fat, flat. Okay, and then your drill. Your drill needs to be of a green wood, or your bow, excuse me, needs to be of a green wood because it needs to be a little flexible. And this is just a piece of willow, right where I found this, this was just a limb, I broke it off, took a shoestring, tied around it and uh, we're not doing this with cordage. Uh, if you want to see cordage, you can look at one of our other videos, but this is just a shoestring here. Let's talk about this bow for a minute, the knots. This is a simple slip knot right here, is all it is. And uh, I just cut a little notch in the, end of my, in the big end of my wood to sort of make my handle. And it just slips in just like that. And I just round it off the edges. And uh, I don't know what you call this knot here, but it's just a wrap. I wrap it about three times and put two half inches in it. And you want it flimsy because you're trying to stretch this one inch dowel in there, you know. Like so. So it's got some pretty good tension. If I let go, it'll fly out. But you don't want too much. It makes it hard to turn. It won't spin freely. So you need to make your bow with a pretty good bit of slack in it. You can see that. And uh, I like to pick a stick that's a little bit crooked, you know, so I can, uh, it makes a real nice bow that way. And if it's not crooked enough, you can always bend it more. That's why you want your green wood for a bow. It makes it flexible. All right, what you want to do, the objects here, you've got your, your, your uh, wood picked out, that skill. You've got your parts made, that skill. Now you've got to learn to use the bow drill, and that can be hard. Pumping this thing back and forth for uh, you know, 15 or 20 minutes can really be hard to do. And then the last skill is probably the toughest. Once you get that ember glowing, you've got to be patient and allow it to burn hot so you can blow it into a flame. Now, before you ever start using your bow drill, you've got to find some way to, to, to start your fire, and that's called tinder. This happens to be a uh, flying squirrel nest. I found it in a hollow log, dug it out, and then I broke some tops off of some reeds I found that were near a little pond, and they're nice and dry. And so what you do is you bundle that up, you put it on a platform, and I, for my platform I'm using these two big leaves right here. That way I'll be able to pick it up and carry it wherever I'm going to have my fire. And we'll spread this out. This is all nice and dry. We'll try to roll it up in a little bundle as best we can because, you know, our, our coal is going to be on this and we're going to have to blow it into a flame. So we'll set that there for now. Okay, once we've got our, our bow, our drill, our fireboard, and our rock. Now, we've got to put a hole inside this, a little starter hole. So what I've done is I just measure the width of the, the drill over. What you want is about a quarter of this stick hanging over the side or flush with the side. If you make it too far over when you drill a little bit, you'll wind up knocking these sides out and your stick will come flying out. It may come flying out anyway, it depends on, on uh, how well you can hold that position. But we're going to just start it for now. And uh, I just put a little knife point right there just to hold it in place. All right, we got my left foot on the fireboard. My left arm is wrapped around my left knee to hold it stable. 
and we got our drill here. We're inserting our tip like that and pick up our rock here. Now, this is the position you've got to maintain this for however long it takes. Could be three or four minutes, could be 30 minutes, all right? It depends on how, how you do it. You also, this is, you got to maintain constant pressure with your left hand. You can't mash too hard, all right? And we're just gonna ease into this. We're kinda gonna mark where our V notch is gonna be. Steady, slow strokes, not too hard at first. So we're already getting a little smoke. I right, will stop right there now. All right, we'll just lay it over here on the side. I'm gonna save all that. See all this dust right here? That's your treasure. That's what you're, you're making uh, coal dust kind of. And that's what's gonna, you're gonna get a pile of that and it'll start to glow red when the time comes. Save every bit of that that you can. Put it in there. Now we're going to start carving our notch right here. When I get done, I'll show it to you. This wood is really rotten. And uh, what happens is sometimes the shoulders of this V notch will break off because the wood's so rotten. It's a little bit of a handicap, but it's dry. So we we'll have to have wood that rotten. If you didn't have a knife, you could use a piece of sharp rock. A flint would work great for this. Now what we've got here is our V-notch pointing right to the ember that I, or the hole that I started. And our drill is about one inch. So our drill is going to come out to here and just, while it's spinning around, it's going to start kicking all that ash out this V here. It's going to pile up on the bottom. And that's what we want. Okay. I, I usually make my V-notches bigger, but this particular piece of wood is so rotten I'm not going to do it. Yeah. All right, left foot stabilized. We got our drill again. We made it the, the drill with the board. We're ready to build a fire. We just have to be patient from here on out now. Sometimes this thing flies out and you have to get it and start over. I don't like to stop until I'm sure I got a fire, so I might go a lot longer than I need to just to keep the friction going. Constant pressure with your left hand. And just be slow and steady. We had a pretty strong wind today. Uh, you got to be patient with this ember. Once it gets to hot and glowing, the last thing you want to do is start huffing and blowing on it because you'll blow it right away. Sometimes it's best just to let it set for a little while. Just take a breather and rest. As long as it's smoking, it's something there glowing. And if you'll just be patient, it'll turn into a fire pretty quick. careful getting this, you can mess up your ember by pulling this out roughly. We're going to tap it gently. Knock that coal out of there. Okay. All right. You look real close. You can see it glowing red right there. This wind's blowing hard. You see that? Got a big ember. See the red? Okay, we'll lay this in here very carefully. And uh, we're going to try to Cover it up. The wind's blowing awfully hard. That's what I wanted to show you. And that's what you're shooting for. If you can get the red coal, you can make the fire. Tell them a little bit about how charcoal is made from what 
Is that what that is sort of like? Um, is, that, is, is that what that little black stuff is? It's sort of like little pieces of charcoal? Yep, it's just you've piled up all that little ash that you off that stick there. It's piled up into a into a little pile and it gets red hot from the friction and it all starts to glow. And you just have to be patient and blow that, steadily watch it, and, and sometimes just letting it set is the best thing to do, especially with this light breeze, it'll do itself. And once you ever get a fire, then you can use your charcoal from previous fires. You can grind it up and make your own pile of charcoal and set it there and it helps you start your fire more. You can pick up that charcoal and take it with you. And this yeah. thing's still got glowing red coals here. There you go. You see that, Steve? Yeah. All right. That took uh, maybe how long? Six minutes? Five minutes? Probably. Total time from the time we started. And that's just uh, just you know dry weeds I found, and uh, um, it looks to me like uh, cypress tree bark that I took it out of a log where flying squirrels shoot it up really good. If you can find a rat's nest, bird's nest, you know anything like that really helps because the rodents will tear it up really fine. But uh, you can see the end of our fire. Drill now, it has rounded over. It mated to that right there. I lost a lot of my shavings at the back side. I could have made my V notch a little bit bigger. But like I said, this is rotten and these shoulders right here as you're going, sometimes they'll just chip off and break off and your drill come flying out. Hopefully by then you've got your ember, you know. I went a little longer there than I thought I needed to, just, just to be sure. But, uh, um, you know, you're trying to make a coal, you're trying to make something, I mean, you can take a steel and a knife and you can make sparks all day long, but you've got to have something to cradle those sparks and hold them long enough so they don't go out. And so you're trying to make a little bird's nest here so that little coal that you've created can burn slowly. And, uh, you know, once you've made your fire and built your fire and you've got the coal, then that's the treasure. You hold on to that, keep it, and you put it in your pocket, take it with you and you crush it up, take your knife or stick and you make a powder out of it and you can get your spark on that. And then once you've got one fire with a bow drill, the second one's much easier. And like I said, it depends on the humidity. Usually we're in a high humidity here and no wind, but uh, today's a really good day for this. And I have done it for probably, you know, 45 minutes before I had success. And normally it takes, you know, about, about twice that long, but this is good dry wood and I wouldn't want it any rottener than that. My grandfather, he's passed away now, but uh, they used to do blacksmithing when he was a little boy. Now, he, he died away recently at 90, so this was a long time ago. But they didn't use coal. They couldn't afford it, and they wouldn't pay for it anyway. You know, they didn't have money. So they would go and chop hardwood and dig a big pit and set it on fire and then cover it up with sand and uh, go back later and rake, you know, rake it up. And that's what they used to do their blacksmithing. That, that you just made this, this lump charcoal you buy in the store. That's exactly what that is. You've just burned wood. I mean, when they make lump charcoal, they probably put it in some giant metal building with, with some kind of gas furnace, get it good and hot to a certain temperature and then close all the doors and shut down the oxygen and then it'll just you know fall apart and they can bag it up. And that, that's, that's how they made charcoal back then. Now, uh, we've ruined the end of this stick. So uh, what I'll do is just, sharpen it down. Just go around it slow like you're sharpening a pencil and uh, put a point back on it and get rid of the char. Of course if I was really trying to survive I would save every flake of this and put it on the fire and, and it, you know, it'd be great a little tender to get the fire going. But uh, we're just going to go around and make a, another blunt tip again. Now my fireboard over here you saw what this was when I started so I'm not going to have to do this again for you I guess but uh, my fireboard here, I've got several holes started, and uh, I can't use this side because I'm doing it right-handed. What I can do is flip it over, and now I can start fires on this side. And I can keep using the same fireboard until I you know, burn it up, and I can probably put one here on the end somewhere and keep using that for a long time. Even if it's really short, you can use it, but it's just easier to hold when it's long. And, uh, and you can see how I've started several. That edge just broke out on that one right there. I did this little demo with some school kids recently. Sometimes I leave the bark on. I've used this one enough that the bark's finally kind of gotten worn off a little bit. Uh, it's a, probably one inch in diameter and smaller, uh, you know, I've started fires with all sizes and the one inch size is about right. The smaller ones seems like sometimes they don't, uh, they get hot, I guess, but sometimes they'll drill a hole right through your board before you get the fire going. And uh, a one inch diameter board and a one inch diameter stick seems to be what works for me. 
and uh, you don't want any thicker than that. Here on the end, it's about three quarters, and I didn't go halfway down any of them before I burn out, you know, before I got a fire. I've started a fire with every one of those, no problems at all. Uh, the other end, you want no friction here because you're trying to you're trying to spin this thing as easily as possible. So I make this end uh, very pointed, and it's just got to sit in there and spin. Now I've used this rock several times, and it's smooth. Uh, but you could uh, you could put grease in there or beeswax if you had anything like that to make it work better. But I always you can go back and resharpen this just a little bit. I don't put too sharp a point on it because it'll just grind it off. But I, I take it down to where the end is, you know, like a quarter of an inch or so every time I do a fire. If you made a point out of it, it would be, I guess, less stable. This way it's still stable, but you don't have that much friction. All your friction and, you know, you want it to be down here where the wood is. It's like that. All right, we're going to go over this again and just uh, fine tune what we did a little bit. Okay, I got my bow here, the drill comes under the string, and you wrap it around like that, okay? Where your point's down. Sometimes you do it and it points up, but... Okay, the reason I... What we're doing here is we're mating these two sticks right here. We're mating this drill with that fireboard, and the result is they're scratching off wood from both pieces. You're scratching off wood from here, and you're scratching off wood from here. And that's what that black powder is, and that's the stuff that's flammable. That's why I tried to save all of that and put it in a pile, because when I got a glow in coal, I put all that on top that I can, and you'll see it start coming off. And we'll stop before we get a fire this time and let you look at that stuff close up. And that stuff is flammable. And see that black dust? You might not can see it from that side, but see it's falling all down in there now, and I got it all around here. You just keep going and uh, try to gather that stuff up in the bottom. That's why I got this leaf here to catch all that black dust. See that dusty? Yeah, yeah. All right, that's what you're doing. You're gathering all this up. You want every bit of that that you can, that you can get. We don't have a fire, any coal now, or anything. But that, I'll pull it away and let you see before it's not burning or anything. They're blocking your view. There you go. And if you have a coal, sometimes you pick up your board and you take your coal away. And you tap it out and let it fall right there. See that pile of dust? That's what you're looking for. A while ago we had a fire, we had a pile about three times that big. And it's just uh, just tiny pieces of wood that have been rubbed off. You, we're rubbing two sticks together, as they say. You always read that in the books, but they're you know pretty short on details. But that's it. You're creating a pile of dust right there.